just check the recording's actually started. Yep, we are recording and it's just turned two o'clock. So we will go to the presentation. Make sure I get the right presentation. And then I'll share my screen. Which hopefully I can share the screen. And it's not allowing me to turn on the screen. Just bear with me a second, folks. Right, I have a technology problem. Which I've hopefully resolved. So a second, we should be able to see the screen. Uh, if someone could just confirm that they can see a, a screen <laughs> for the digital IT strategy training course overview. All good, Steve. I can see it fine. Thank you, Bob. Right, OK. So for the, for the next 45 minutes, uh, we'll be looking at uh, Digital IT Strategy Training Course. Uh, what the course is, what it encompasses, who it's for, um, looking at some of the areas um, around the, the course and in terms of the assessments and the examination for this particular course, which is different to the other courses. So uh, rules for the webinar, if everybody could have all their mics on mute, we have a chat facility. So if you have any questions um, throughout the webinar, uh, feel free to raise a chat and uh, Bob and Debbie are on session. So they'll be able to hopefully answer your question. And if it's something that I need to have some input to, then we can pick that up at the end of the session. Um, if you're disconnected due to a technology problem, then please feel free just to log back in again. It shouldn't take too long to get reconnected. Um, it, this is being recorded, so if you do miss um, a couple of minutes or if you have tech, total techno, technology failure, um, then you could watch the recording um, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. OK, so. A um, little bit about Purple Griffin and myself. Uh, Purple Griffin, it, we're an accredited training organisation. Um, we've been, been delivering ITIL training for over 18 years, and we also deliver um, various other um, training offerings, project management, Agile, DevOps, SIAM, ITAM, artificial intelligence training, um, cybersecurity. Uh, we operate worldwide. We are based in the UK. Uh, um, we offer, um, uh, what do we offer? We offer self-paced training. Uh, we have uh, instructor-led virtual uh, training, and we also offer on-site and public scheduled face-to-face -face training, although a lot of that's on hold at the moment due to the, uh, the ongoing pandemic. We do operate worldwide. Um, so we can work with, uh, part, we do work with partners in Europe, America, uh, Asia, uh, myself, I'm Steve Lawless. That's me in the picture. Um, I'm a trainer consultant, so I've been training for the last uh, 18 years and providing consultancy services to various organisations um, globally uh, over the, uh, the that time. So 40 years in IT, probably 30 years working with ITIL, going back to ITIL version one, and now right up to ITIL four whether I'll make it to ITIL 5, if there ever is to be an ITIL 5, we'll see. Um, I also train in um, VERY-SM, DevOps, ITAM, SIAM, and AI. Wow. 
although um, so we are looking at the digital and IT strategy um, course so uh, this is a, a it's either a, a three-day course we offer um, either virtually or on site or instructor led um, or it's about 18 hours of self-paced e-learning um, our offerings i think our first uh, virtual course will be available from mid-october i believe and our e-learning offering for uh, digital and it strategy will be available mid-november and we'll we'll talk about the the course and the exam and the structure um, as we go through the presentation so the, the purpose of this webinar really is just to explain what DITS is, um, Digital IT Strategy, uh, what the, the course comprises of. It's the last course to be released by Axlos. So they previously released the, the other man for managing professional courses and the, the other course in the Strategic Leader work, screen, work Stream, which is Direct Plan and Improve. So that's the course that's in both work streams. Um, hopefully we can give you an insight into why you should attend a DITS course, um, what's new in terms of digital IT strategy, um, what's the same, so what's sort of been um, repurposed from ITIL version 2 and ITIL version 3, um, an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, so this is the um, the accreditation structure. Um, the, the major block in the middle, and uh, ITIL Managing Professional is made up of four units, three specialists and one strategist unit. Prerequisite to um, attend those courses is that you hold an ITIL Foundation Certificate at ITIL 4. Um, you can transition to manage, Managing Professional Certification if you are an existing ITIL V3 expert or if you hold 17 credits from the V3 scheme and you can take the, the five day uh, managing professional transition course, um, which has a, an exam um, associated with it. Questions are based Bloom's level taxonomy level one and two. So relatively easy questions. Um, it's not rocket science. Axelos do not want people to fail who've invested so much time and effort into gaining the ITIL expert qualification. The ITIL, uh, the ITIL leader digital and IT strategy, which is this overview that we're looking at today, uh, that's one of two courses in this strategic leader work stream. And again, you have to have ITIL foundation to, uh, to take this course. Um, and it's one of two courses. Uh, in, in terms of which course you should take first, I'd suggest take, taking direct plan and approve first uh, before you take the digital and IT strategy because um, honestly it builds on information and knowledge that you, you will gain on the other courses. So whether you've come through ITIL V3 and transitioned to managing professional or whether you've taken all of the, the specialist modules and then the DPI module, um, the all of the information and knowledge that you will have gained will help you in the digital and IT strategy module. So don't think it's a, the one that you should be doing first, probably the one that you should be doing last. Um, and again, if, if you are ITIL managing professional and ITIL strategic leader, Axlos say that you're on the road to becoming an ITIL master. Um, I still need to ask Axlos. I said last week I was going to contact them and I failed to. Um, I've got a conversation with them this evening, so I'll be asking that question um, to ask how we actually get to that ITIL master accreditation. OK, so um, DITS varies from the other um, the other courses in terms of this um, exam is, is two part. So um, there's a, a, a multiple choice exam, which we'll look at in a second. But there are also assignments. So there's actually four assignments you would do as part of the course. So if it's, if it's a virtual or a, a class, an in-class um, instructor-led training course, then there will be four 
45 minute assignments that you would undertake as a group uh, within the um, within the context of the course. Um, and these um, four assignments require you to understand a case study. It's it's open book, so you can look at your your DITS book or any other books that you have available to you. Um, and then you would be evaluated uh, your presentation, you know, 10 to 15 minute presentation at the end of the assignment would be evaluated by the, the trainer um, in terms of um, a set of criteria that we will mark you against. <clears throat> and, that, and that's that you've understood the case study, that you have been able to apply best practice that case study and a, a particular um, scenario, uh, which is the, the assignment, um, that you've been able to identify um, the way forward or, or provide recommendations in terms of the actions that should be undertaken, um, that, that you've understood it and you can actually explain uh, to the tutor um, how uh, things should be taken forward to that maybe to to move forward in a digital transformation. So um, if for some reason you miss one of these group exercises, it would be possible to actually undertake an individual written assignment based on same case study, same assignment. Um, if you are doing the course, the DITS course through um, self-study, so you're doing it online, self-paced, that instead of working as a group, you'd be working individually on these assignments and you'd submit your assignment to the tutor. Um, and, and typically our, our discourse is a 90 day duration or 150 day access. So at some stage you would submit your uh, your four assignments um, and be marked on that and be given feedback. And once you've passed the, um, the four uh, assignments, you would then be allowed to again, then go on to take the multiple choice exam. And multiple choice exams, similar to the, the other multiple choice exams, um, except this is 60 minutes, 30 questions, pass mark is 70%. Um, and these are based on Bloom's taxonomy level two and three. So a, a lower level. So that we, a level two, we can actually comprehend, we understand, we can explain and we can actually apply it to a, 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 a small scenario. The, the, the four assignments that we're looking at are based at Bloom's level four, where we need some analysis. So slightly higher level, um, less easy to actually write multiple choice questions for level four, five, six, seven um, type questions. So th that's why they're, they're set as um, assignments. Um, there is an online proctored exam available, or there will be uh, very shortly, a uh, week or two's time. Um, I think Axelos are, are bringing it to market through uh, PeopleCert, the, um, the examining institute. And uh, th this part of the, the exam is closed book. So the multiple choice, it would be remote proctored. Um, and a couple of hints and tips is one, make sure that your technology will allow you to do a remote proctored exam. Um, increasingly with some of our larger corporate customers and public sector organizations, um, we're finding that the technology um, and security and HR won't allow people to use company equipment um, for remote proctored exams. So make sure you've got the technology available. So either using a home PC uh, with um, a webcam um, or that you've got permission um, to be able to use a, a company's uh, machine for this purpose. So uh, the case study, you'd be provided with the case study prior to the training course. Um, and the case study covers three fictional companies. So there's a, a language learning center, there's a hospitality company, and there's a, a new software startup. Um, there's also a common major risk report associated with the case study. You'd be expected to understand the case study. So before you come into the training course that you've actually read the case study, you understand it. OK, so you, you don't want to be coming in day one of the course um, having not read the case study. OK, so um, 
if you're working in a group, um, if it's instructor led virtual course, or when we get back to real face to face classroom courses one day, um, then you'd be broken down into groups. You'd be working on the, the same uh, organization um, and then we would apply the the assignments to the company that you preferred working with what one of these three fictional companies. Um, so and we will take your um, your preferences into account when allocating you to a group. So you'd be allocated to a group of um, maybe two, three, four, maybe even five people, depending on how many people are on the course. And obviously, if it's self paced online, you'd be working individually um, on your assignment. OK, so uh, the, the rules and recommendations Axelos have, have given us really about how to run these assignments because they, these are new. Um, well, they're, they're new unless you remember ITIL version two, um, the um, the manager's certificate. So the service support and service delivery training courses that I was delivering 18 years ago where we did um, in course assignments and the, the tutor filled out an assignment report. So we've sort of gone back slightly to those days um, because they were open book. Um, so you've got an opportunity to actually apply your own skills and knowledge and experience to this and obviously applying ITIL best practice uh, and other best practices that you're aware of. <clears throat> and you, you can make assumptions, you can state those assumptions and this is why you're suggesting this course of action based on um, an assumption that you've made because it's not uh, evident within the case study whether it's it's one way or the other way. So you've made an assumption and this is your decision. These are your recommendations. Um, one member of the group would be asked to um, document the recommendations and present it back to the trainer at the end of each assignment. So it, it's an opportunity for you not just to regurgitate the, the, the facts and the figures and whatever else, but to actually apply your knowledge, your skills, your experience. And the, the DITS course is aimed at people who've got at least three years management experience. So it, it's not for someone coming straight off a service desk um, to, to gain this qualification. You, you would be expected to have um, a serious amount of experience. OK, so the um, there is a DITS book. Axlos with uh, TSO, the stationary office, have published a, a digital IT strategy book. Um, and the, the other content which goes into the, the course comes from the, the 34 practices or the practice guides, which you should have access to if you've passed your ITIL, ITIL 4 foundation or an MPT um, course. So you should have access to the My ITIL where you can gain access to these practice um, guides. Um, the seven practice guides, which are specific really for DITs, uh, things like architecture management, measuring and reporting, portfolio management, risk management, service financial management, strategy management, and workforce and talent, uh, and talent management. Not all elements of these practices will be covered within the course syllabus or within the, the examination. Um, so there's some book content and there's some practice content which isn't examinable. Um, the, if you look at the syllabus, you can see which elements are examinable and which aren't. Um, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't read the bits which aren't examinable because there's lots of useful, really good information there, uh, which will help you in your, in your career in service management. Um, but the, we can't obviously examine everything, every element of uh, of best practice. OK, so let's see what DITS is. OK, so what what it is and what it isn't. OK, it's, it's an opportunity for you to actually um, show your skills and knowledge in terms of how you can digitally enable an organisation. So it, it's not um, a tick list. It's not a how to do it guide. Um, it's a review of capabilities that organisations require a set of capabilities to move them forward. It's not, a, again, it's not a checklist of do's and don'ts. It's the, the DITS course is aimed at helping people to evaluate new technologies and 
disruptive technologies um, and look at how an organization can um, create some competitive edge for itself, well, whether it's an internal or an external service provider. Um, it's, it's not looking specifically at emerging technologies and telling you how to use them. Um, it's trying to get people to change their mindset about innovative thinking, um, looking at how we handle these waves of disruptive technology, uh, like the big data, the Internet of Things, um, bimodal operation, machine learning, um, AI ops, all these sorts of things. So, and it, it's not a forecast of what you should do and what's coming along, what's coming down the pipeline. It, it's trying to change your mindset in terms of how you will manage um, these waves of uh, disruptive technology. Okay, so the book itself, if you've managed to see the book or um, in, in um, a manuscript format, or you've got access to the book yet, uh, you'll notice that probably about two thirds of the book is based on continual improvement. Um, from in version three terms, we, we called it our CSI approach. In ITIL 4, we call it our continual improvement model. Um, and the, the rest of the book looks at um, techniques and capabilities around digital leadership, how to manage innovation, emerging technology, how to manage strategic risk, and how to structure a, a digital business. Um, for, for those of you who haven't seen um, this diagram before, but have seen the ISIL version three um, a CSI approach, the take action step is a new step uh, which has been evolved. So to, to move from a, a non-digital organization to a digital organization, uh, what we're suggesting is you can use the CI model to, to help you al along that pathway. Um, to, to get from where you currently are to where you need to be or where you want to be. OK, so that, that's the way the book's structured. So it, it takes these these seven steps, um, builds on them, looks at uh, the, our strategy and how we can implement that strategy, how we should formulate the strategy, what the risks are to the strategy, who should be involved, those sorts of things. A lot of the, the basic concepts are still there. So by now, uh, if you're doing the, the DITS course, uh, you should have been through several other courses probably. Um, at least Foundation and MPT or Foundation and CDS, DPI, High Velocity IT, etc. cetera. Um, so you, you will have seen these concepts. You will have seen the service value system. You will have seen the service value chain. You will have seen the four dimensions. So we're going to build on elements. So Things like governance, practices, continual improvement, value, um, value streams within the value chain, um, the the four dimensions and the the six um, factors, um, external factors, um, they all are all encompassed really within our strategy. They're things that we need to, need to take into account. So. The DITS course is looking for us to demonstrate the use of the, the guiding principles as well. Remember the seven guiding principles, they, they're there from foundation onwards. So we need to take those and, and look at how we can apply those. And there could well be an assignment um, around the which of the guiding principles you would apply and how you would apply them. So we could be looking at uh, basic concepts and how we'd apply them to um, to transform our organization into a, a digital business. So just as a reminder about the guiding principles, um, they're not independent, they are interlinked. Um, and really the, the considerations, the things that you should consider every time you do something. So whether we're making a decision or prioritizing work, um, or are trying to identify or re review improvement opportunities or, or whatever, resolve a problem. Um, we should be look, looking at these guiding principles. So, you know, have, have we collaborated? Have we promoted visibility? Are we focusing on value? Are we keeping it simple? Are we being iterative? Are we providing feedback? So the, the considerations uh, that whatever we're doing, any activity, 
uh, we should apply the guiding principles to. Now, not all of them all the time. Um, typically, there's one or two key ones uh, that we could apply. OK, so another part of the or next part of the course is how we leverage digital strategy. Um, and, and that's really to react to digital disruption. So we, we've said these things are coming down the down the pipeline in terms of machine learning, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, etc. So we, as part of the course, we'll cover some of the the basic concepts. So we'll cover things like what is digital technology. So what is it? What's the difference between information technology and operational technology? What's the purpose of communication technology? Uh, we'll look at what a digital business is versus a digital organization. Uh, what, should, what is digitized digitization? What does that mean? Um, you know, th th this takes me back probably 20, 30 years ago um, from when I had lots of nice glossy um, albums um, I played on my record player, uh, which then became digitized into CDs. Now I've got hundreds of CDs which I no longer need because I can just stream them from YouTube or, or wherever or Spotify. OK, so yeah, we'll look at some of the, the basic terminology concepts. Do we have a common understanding? Yeah, what it, what does digital transformation mean? Yeah, what what is a business strategy? Uh, what's our digital strategy? What what's our IT strategy? What's the interrelationship? What is a product and a service? What's a digital product? Um, and and business models. So do we have to have one business business model? Could we have multiple business models? Could we be bimodal or multimodal in the, the way we work? So we'll, we'll cover a lot of the, the basic concepts to start off with. Make, make sure we're all we, we all understand the the terminology. Um, if we go back several years, life was quite simple. Plan, build, run. This was our traditional innovation cycle. Um, and, and this has evolved really with digital. So we've, we have it now a, a digital innovation cycle where we're still building and running, but we're also measuring and learning and rebuilding and rerunning and measuring. And all the time that we're doing planning and support. So we've got this continual cycle of activities um, where we're still doing a lot of the basic things. They haven't gone away, uh, but we're doing th more things um, rather than sequentially, but we're doing them iteratively um, and, and, and it's ongoing and we're doing things faster. So we're doing continual integration, continual deployment and continual support. So just looking at movement from traditional to digital in terms of how it's impacted uh, things like governance. So governance traditionally was focused on financial results, compliance, control. Now the emphasis has changed to sustainability. So we're looking at the, the triple bottom line. So we're looking at social, environmental and economic sustainability. Uh, we're looking at value creation and co-creation and uh, and agility as, as key key areas. If you, if you look at the other um, sort of four areas below governance, you'll see they map onto the the four dimensions. So I, I won't go into detail on all of them, but we'll we'll consider where we maybe where we currently are and where we need to be, or where we were and where we're heading. So for for example, information and technology used to be focused on enter enterprise resource planning, ERP, typically centralized, typically focused on application integration. If we talk about that digitally, we're now talking about cloud, microservices, digital first, native digital. Um, and, and it's the same with the other four dimensions. So those four dimensions were there in ISIL version three, going back to 2008. Uh, but we call them the four P's, people, process, product and partners. So that they've evolved uh, with ISIL 4 um, and they've expanded. And if anyone's looked at the, the practice guides, you will notice each of the practice guides is a huge chunk about the four dimensions 
have the four dimensions underpins uh, those practices. So the next stage of the course we're looking at, uh, can we understand how an organization uses digital IT strategy to remain viable um, in the environmentals which are disrupted by digital technology? And that, that this reminds me of a story many years ago as a child. I had a watch produced by a company called Timex and it was an analog watch and they didn't embrace the move to digital technology. And this is 40, 50 years ago and time, Timex went bust as, as an organization. Uh, they didn't think that people would ever want digital watches. Um, they wanted to stay with analog, but they were the bottom end of the market. So they went top end of the market, um, so that they went to the wall. But they did dabble in some form of digital technology. They dabbled in 3D cameras, but either they were ahead of the game um, or they didn't really embrace it well, um, but that really didn't take off. OK, so to remain viable, we, we need to be involved. We need to understand how disruptive technology will affect our organisation, our jobs, our roles, our livelihoods. So in terms of remaining viable, we need to look at different sides of it. So we need to look at the, the ecosystem in which our organisation sits. Uh, we need to look at patterns of behaviour and characteristics uh, in our industry. So it, in the training industry, um, I, I spent this morning talking with a, a, a lot of other training companies um, who have, were focused about the training industry. But equally, we could be looking at the training market. So externally, our customers, what their requirements are for uh, training moving forward. Um, and we can look at um, the organization itself in terms of its maturity, um, maybe where it's balanced in terms of achieving its um, strategic fo uh, focus, um, but it has a strategic focus even. Um, and look at various models in terms of positioning itself to be able to um, adopt the disruptive and new digital technologies. So it, we'll, we'll spend the time on the course looking at how an organisation remains viable. The other part of the course is understanding the relationship between uh, the, the various concepts that we cover in digital and IT strategy and the, the SVS. Um, and look at the, the, the basics of the, the value chain and how we can actually utilise them to create value for the organisation. So we'll, we'll look at analysis, we'll look at the environmental analysis, um, which is typically PESL. So political, economical, social, technological, legal and environmental factors. Um, so the, this sort of sits around the four dimensions and is applicable to all of the four dimensions. Uh, we'll look at how we analyse the organisation, um, how our organisation sits within the environment we operate in. So Purple Griffin, as an example, as a training company, where does it sit within the, the training market, the training industry? So we need to do some analysis. We'll also look at external um, and internal analysis. Ex external, um, if, if anyone's ever done SWOT analysis, so strengths and weaknesses, typically we're looking internally. Opportunities and threats, we're looking externally. So a little bit more complicated than that. So, so we'll we look at internal analysis and, um, and external analysis techniques, and, and also the, the service value system as a whole. Um, in, in terms of the, the practices, continual improvement, um, governance, um, planning, th things like that. Next part of the course is looking at the various approaches we can make to digital information technology to achieve the customer market relevance and operational excellence. So that this is looking at our, our customers, uh, trying to understand the customer journey. So. Um, anyone who would have attended uh, the drive stakeholder value will understand the customer journey. So we, we'll we'll look at this, um, how we can how we engage with our customers in terms of touch points and interactions, 
what the experience is from the, the various um, customers uh, or uh, consumers that we're engaging with, who could be a sponsor, a customer or a user, the various personas uh, that are there, maybe influencers and decision makers along this customer journey and who they engage with internally um, in terms of uh, internal service provision or maybe even external service provision through partners and what, what those engagements and interactions are, and how we can make them positive uh, to make sure that the customer has a perfect journey. The, the customer experience uh, is affordable, it's, it meets their requirements and their, their preferences in terms of how we, we deal with that customer. But we need to understand the customer journey map. And equally, uh, we need to look at various strategic approaches. So, so what, what's the market relevance to the products and services we offer? Uh, what strategic approaches should we um, develop? Can we have? Um, and also how we deliver um, things like an omni-channel uh, delivery and support mechanism. And that, that's the example in the, the diagram there. And in terms of um, maybe engaging with our customer in terms of interactions, um, there's, um, th there's some sort of a mobile app uh, they, they can use to look at, it could be a Google search or something. They maybe go to social media and, and ask the, the community, they go on the web and browse, uh, they, they phone us, so a direct uh, voice contact, uh, make an appointment to maybe display or uh, pr promote the product or service we're offering to them, or, or maybe it's an engineer's on-site visit, um, and then engage with them in terms of um, agreeing and selling the service. Uh, to them and then looking at um, review, um, which again could go back to a mobile app application in terms of um, how well did we do. Um, and th this could be engagement for uh, buying a new service, but equally this could be a support um, call. So, and we can apply this to uh, white, white goods services. So my washing machine's broken down. This is how we provide omni-channel support. To, to get that washing machine fixed. OK, so it's it could be applied to any scenario. Other strategic approaches we'll look at are um, context sensitive delivery and support approach, looking at customer analytics, uh, looking at customer feedback and 360 degree approaches. So looking at cu customer from 360, but also um, our in internal support teams you know, the 360 approach. So looking at all elements. Um, also, how do we deliver excellence across the four dimensions and uh, address those external factors as well? Um, we'll also look at a strategic approach from a, a financial perspective. So uh, are the products and services we deliver free? Um, is there some sort of freemium or, or a premium? or an enterprise, so how, how do we charge um, our, our customers? How, how do we gain return on, on investment if we're a, a commercial organisation? Uh, we'll also look at uh, two of the, the practices which are most relevant in this sort of area, which is the portfolio management practice and also the service financial management practice. So we'll, we'll be looking at things like uh, financial policies, um, how we optimise a portfolio, so we'll look at um, different methods there. We'll look at how we fund a project or, or, in terms of our products and services that we want to deliver to our consumers. Um, looking at how we balance things like the cost of innovation, cost of operation, um, and also charging modules. So how are we charging? Uh, it, is, is there a return on investment? Um, is, is this something we tie people into for 12 months? Is it a pay, be, pay per use model? So we'll, we'll look at different strategic approaches around the financial side. Um, we'll also look at risks, uh, but we'll look at risks from a, a strategic side. So looking at the risks and opportunities, because it's not always risks of uh, digital disruption. Um, 
So we, we have to remember a risk is a possible event that could cause harm or loss uh, or something that make, might make it more difficult to actually achieve our objectives. But it could also be uncertainty of outcome. Um, and it, it could actually be po positive outcome as well as a negative outcome. So it's like buying a lottery ticket. I, I risk I'm going to lose £2.50 this evening, uh, but equally I risk that I might win £47 million pounds or euros. So th there is a risk. <laughs> um, but, so we, we look at um, strategic risk, um, but risk typically comes in four flavours. We've got operational risk, project risk, program risk, and strategic risk. So we, we really need to, to look at all four elements. So we we'll look at um, where risk comes from. So obviously new technologies, disruptive technologies, um, adopting new business model could provide a, a risk. Um, how consumers are actually using our technology. They may be consuming it in a way which was never intended, uh, which could be a risk to us. Uh, we'll look at the Internet of Things and obviously cybercrime um, is uh, one of the major risks. And then how we manage the, those risks um, for, from a, a digital organisation perspective. Um, so we'll look at how, how we can organise the organisation to actually manage risk, um, to avoid um, unnecessary risk or risks which aren't within our risk appetite. Um, so we'll, we'll look at how we identify risk. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at DICE, so disruption, innovation, cybersecurity, and engagement. Uh, we'll look at qualitative and quantitative uh, risk assessment. Uh, we'll look at how we posture ourselves in terms of risk. Um, so in terms of our risk appetite as an organisation and how we treat risk, um, it's how we mitigate risk, uh, maybe outsource risk um, and also how we actually change the, the mindset of uh, the various stakeholders within the organisation um, so that they are more risk informed. We'll also then of course be looking at the uh, the steps and techniques um, that we'd be using in terms of defining and advocating digital and IT strategy. So we'll look at things like readiness assessments, so digital readiness assessment, look at various types of readiness assessments, um, how we perform um, a gap analysis, so in terms of where we want to be and where we currently are. Um, and if we do nothing, we will get to and what's the gap between what that point is and where we want to be. Um, and we communicate and vision and overall strategy. Uh, we'd be looking at how we, we can use a, a business case to advocate for digital and IT strategy. Um, that there's a, a nice um, saying, a chap called Alexander Van Heer uh, came out with, uh, which was, um, when the flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment to which it grows, not the flower, uh, which I, th I thought was quite quite pointed. So um, if, if things are going well, then it, it could be the environment we need to change, the culture maybe in the organisation. Next step in the course, we'll be looking at how we implement a digital and IT strategy. So at, at this part of the course, uh, we will look at the, the operating models for digital organisations. Uh, we'll look at the, the skills required um, of, of leaders, but also of other people uh, within the organisation um, in terms of the, um, their skill sets of, and how we educate them uh, to acquire those skills to work in a, a, a digital um, environment. <clears throat> we'll look at parallel operating models. So it, it could be with a, a bimodal or a multimodal um, operating model uh, within our organization and the, the problems and challenges uh, that might give us of working in a traditional and a digital way um, as we transform maybe wholly to a, a digital operation. Uh, we'll look at the how we 
assess success of implementing a digital IT strategy. Um, and we'll look at the activities that we typically go through in a digital transformation program. And these are those steps. Um, so what we will be looking at really is how we develop a vision. Where are we now? So how do we do a digital readiness assessment? Where do we want to be? So can we define our objectives maybe over the next one, two, three, four, five years maybe? Um, how do we get there? So how do we architect the changes? How do we define a roadmap? Take the action. So how do we implement and gain feedback that the action was successful? And how do we actually say that we got there? So how do we measure and improve? And then how do we keep momentum going to check that the vision is still the vision? Um, for those of you who were here at the beginning of the presentation, you'll notice that this maps onto our continual improvement model. Um, so what we're looking to do is using the continual improvement model to transform an organization into a um, into a, a digital organization. So th these are our steps really for a digital transformation program. OK, so in, in summary, the course covers key concepts. We've got our continual improvement model there in the middle, so so adopting a digital strategy as a journey of how we get from where we want to be to where we need to get to and check that we did actually get there. Um, and also looking at some of the, the key capabilities. So, so looking at um, how we manage innovation, how we manage risk, um, how, how, we, how we develop our capabilities to actually achieve our goals. So as with all of our other overviews, we have a sample question and this one um, I've taken it down to Bloom's level two. So hopefully you'll, you'll all be able to pick the answer. So which term is used to describe a situation where a physical document is scanned so they can be stored on a computer? So is it A, digital technology, B, digital organization, C, digitization or D, digital transformation. I'll give you a second to think. OK, so I'll give you the answer and the answer should be C. He says, yes, there we go. C, digitization. So the, the multiple choice exam, well, Bloom's level two, this is Bloom's level two so and three. So again, not rocket science. Um, and you do have those four assignments to uh, to complete prior to taking the multiple choice exam. Um, and there's opportunities there to do virtual learning um, or self-paced um, online e-learning. OK, so uh, that's the end of the presentation about DITS. Um, if you've raised any questions via chat, I hope they've been answered. Um, if anyone is still remaining um, and isn't just counting on the recording of this session, then if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I might be in a better position to answer them after this evening because there is a, a train the trainer uh, session on DITS, which Axelos, Axelos is running for various trainers this evening and another one tomorrow morning. Um, so if there's any questions I can't answer or Bob or Debbie can't answer, then I'll be happy to take those up this evening and get answers for you um, in the coming days. Right, are there any questions? Any questions, Bob, or any questions in the chat? before I stop the recording. Right, OK, I'll stop the recording. Um, if, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to email us at info at purplegriffon.com or, or even phone or go on to our website where we have our online chat 
uh, where someone will pick up your question and get back to you. Steve, uh, Steve there is a question. Sorry. Ah, hi, Bob. Um, <laughs> regarding the four key aspects for digital transformation, which one goes first, leadership, innovation, risk or structure? Ooh, ooh. That's what uh, I thought when I looked at the ooh. question. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think it has to be leadership. Personally. I should imagine all of them need to be duly considered, but oh, uh, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think you do need the right leadership to drive a digital transformation. Uh, you need the people with the right skills um, and the right capabilities to drive it forward. So, if, yeah. if I if, if I was doing something first, I would train the staff, including myself, if I was the the head of uh, digital transformation. Yeah, I think that. But I, I will, I will, um, I will mull on that one, Bob. But I, I think it is, I think it is about the people. Um, David, David's taking that forward a bit more. He's got leadership and next. Oh, he wants them in sequence. Yes. Oh, yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell him I'll come back to him on that one? <laughs> um, okay. I'll have to put some thought into it. <laughs> Off, off the top of my head, <laughs> um, I, I think they're all equally important, um, and and you can do everything in parallel. Uh, but I, I always think that people are an organisation's most valuable asset. So when anyone suggests to me what should we do first, I always say train the people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come back to him on that one. Yeah, I've just I've just um indicated that steve right yeah it's um yeah although a lot of the information in dits was in strategy book it was in malk it was in the idle practitioner you know it's it's been in various guises and forms over the, the years um the way it's been pulled together in the the dits book is obviously unique um, and, and questions will be based on what's actually written in the book. Um, but but of, obviously, uh, in, in terms of the assignments, you're allowed to put your own mark on that in terms of your um, your experience, your skills. OK, so, so it is going a little bit back to the old ITIL version two, where we had two, three hour written papers where you could actually state assumptions and base your decision and your thoughts on how to handle a particular scenario based on your own practical experience. But we're never going back to three hour written papers again. So I, I think these assignments are a halfway house. Um, and it, it is not easy to create uh, Bloom's level for multiple Jewish questions. So um, yeah, I think the assignments are a good way forward. Um, I'm not looking forward to uh, to conducting them. Just wish a lot of them were face to face. We could have people around flip charts and whiteboards with post-it notes and things like that. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, but we'll we'll have to do it virtually, probably for the next twelve months until until the whole world's inoculated. Right. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I'll stop the recording and close the session. And thank everybody for attending, listening in. And I, I hope I've given people some sort of insight. And if you listen to this as a recording, then yeah, as I said before, please feel free to uh, reach out, contact us, ask for any information uh, regarding this. But please don't make DITS your first course after foundation. You go on the other courses first, because, because this is sort of a capstone in, in, my, uh, in my opinion, in, in terms of the um, your level of knowledge and your your expertise and skills that you require to uh, to be successful okay you don't you don't want to just be scraping a pass you want to be really successful in the um, in the exam right okay with that i'll stop the recording and stop sharing the screen and thank you everybody thanks dave okay thank you